Okay. So in this talk, I'm going to consider integration by parts applied to some products which are a little more complicated than what, a little more subtle than what we've been seeing so far. There's even more, more stuff to see later. But right now we're just doing this. We're doing polynomial times trigonometric or exponential, but not the ones which are just sine, cosine, or sine h cosine. You can look doing ones which are not polynomials in these. So we're doing some things like x tan square x or x tan x or x square tan square x, these kinds of things. Okay, and we have to figure out what the general strategy for these is. Now, we can first look at Ilet, the general heuristic. You have polynomial, which is algebraic, and these are trigonometric exponentials. So you expect that you want to integrate the trigonometric exponential, differentiate the polynomial. If you keep doing that, the polynomial will become eventually zero. zero. And the trigonometric exponential, if you can keep integrating the trigonometric or exponential enough times, so you survive till the polynomial becomes zero, then you're good. You've found the answer. On the other hand, if this trigonometry or exponential, you're not able to keep integrating. If you run into some problem, then you're stuck. Now, when you had trigonometric exponential that was just involving these sine, cosine, sine h, cosine h, with just a polynomial in these, you are guaranteed that you would be able to keep integrating the piece. However, now that we have things like tan and tan square around, we are not guaranteed that. So, whether we can do this or not depends on the situation. Let me make that more precise. If the polynomial, so differentiate polynomial, integrate the trig or x. If the polynomial has degree d, then how many times do you need to be able to integrate the other piece? D plus 1. Yes. The other piece needs to be integrated d plus 1 times. We don't have a general guarantee, but maybe in some cases you can do that. Why d plus 1? Because that's the number of times it takes for the polynomial to become zero. Another thing of it is you apply integration by parts d times and ultimately get a constant and then there's one more integration for that. So there's d plus one times you have to integrate the expression. Let me bring out here now some relevant stuff so we can look at these three things and figure out which ones can and cannot be integrated by parts in terms of the functions we know. So tan square. Well, okay, if you want to do x tan square x, how many times do you need to know how to integrate tan square? Degree of x is? Twice. So degree of x is 1, so you need to be able to integrate this two times. What's the integral of tan square? Tan x minus x. Can you integrate tan x minus x? Yes, because we know how to integrate tan x. Okay, so we can integrate tan square twice. 1, 2. Okay, so this can be done. So tan square integrates twice. What about x tan x? What's the integral of tan? Negative log cosine. In order to integrate x tan x, you need to be able to integrate tan how many times? Twice. Twice. We already integrated once, but now we are in this log cosine business, which there's no way of integrating. And we'll talk about that a little later. But, but basically the answer is no, because tan x integrates only once. I don't... I that this definitely can be integrated. It's just that we don't have a, have a name for that integral among the functions we have seen, among the elementary functions we have seen. Okay? Among our functions we've seen. Okay, so, so it definitely this, this expression can be integrated. This expression can be integrated, but not among the functions we've seen. You can introduce a new name for such functions. Okay, what about x square tan square x? How many times would you need to be able to integrate tan square to do this? Thrice. Thrice. The first time you can integrate, you get tan x minus x. The second time again you can integrate. The x, the polynomial part can be integrated. So that's not an issue. This part integrate this. Can you integrate tan square a third time? No. No, because you get here. So this is again, no. Because tan square 
integrates only twice. I just write only twice. And we need three times. Right? Okay, now I want to elaborate a little bit on this x tan x issue. Why can you not do it? Like, so, and this is actually a good way to illustrate the circular trap. Let me just write that down. So, try to do this integral x tan x. What do you take as the part to differentiate? So, take the polynomial, polynomial as the part to differentiate and the Right? Integrate the trigonometric exponential. So differentiate x, integrate tan x, so you get x times negative log cosine x. Remember, this product is product of both the anti-differentiated things. Right? Minus, are we here? Yes. Integral of 1. I won't write the 1, but there's a 1 times negative log cosine x. Are we here? Yes, but we're not here. So, so, okay, so that is negative x log cosine x plus the integral of okay okay now now if I just gave you this integral and ask you how would you do this integral, what would you try to do? You'd say, okay, this is sort of like a logarithmic thing, right? So, what would you take as the part to differentiate and part to integrate? Uh, integrate 1. Integrate 1 and differentiate log cosine x. What would happen if you tried to do that? Uh, you go back to the original question. You would go back to the original one. You would get into a circular trap. Okay? And that's sort of the reason why this doesn't work. So, you, you can get by integration by parts. You can get from here to here. and But then the natural next step integration by parts the part you would take to differentiate would be the one you got by integration. Okay, so if you try to do the natural thing here, would lead to the circular trap. Okay, so that sort of explains why there's no escaping. Now it's not so clear, maybe there's some other very clever strategy for doing this integration, but it turns out there isn't. And this basically is the limit of our, our capabilities here. Now you can actually introduce new functions which are these antiderivatives and so on, but uh, that's that's beyond our current scope. Okay, let's look at the next step. So inverse trig or log times non-polynomial algebraic function. Now what happens when you differentiate an inverse trig or log? So that's, let me write some examples here. So maybe arctan x over x ln x over x square and octan x over x square. What happens when you differentiate something like octan or ln? I guess I'll have that somewhere here. Here we have it. So the derivative of octan is 1 over 1 plus x, so the ln is 1 over x. The derivative of arc sine is 1 over root 1 minus x square. Point is, in all cases, where do you land up when you differentiate? You land up in the algebraic domain. Okay? So, the general smart idea, which also agrees with, but it also agrees with ILATE. If you look at ILATE, then you should differentiate inverse log and integrate the algebraic thing. So, the general idea will be differentiate inverse trig or log integrate the algebraic thing. It's no longer a polynomial. Does this work? Well, it depends on whether when you integrate the algebraic thing, you remain algebraic. When you differentiate this, you get in the algebraic domain. But on the other hand, you're also integrating this algebraic thing. And we don't know whether that remains in the algebraic domain or not. That actually depends on the situation. So this may or may not work. So this works it works if the integral of the algebraic piece is algebraic. Are we here? And it doesn't work otherwise. Okay, so 
So let's look back at these examples. Let me start with with this one. Let me get you one. When I do integration of parts, and I won't write down the full thing, but when I do integration of parts, I'll pick ln x as the part to differentiate. And what's the part to integrate? 1 over, 1 over x square, not x square. It's 1 over x square. Now, 1 over x square, what's the integral of that? That's minus 1 over x. So, 1 over x square, this is ln x times 1 over x square. This differentiates to, are we here? Yes. 1 over x. Oops, yeah, yeah, that's right. And this integrates to minus 1 over x. Okay, let's get the formula out. Derivative of log is 1 over x. Integral of this, you have to integrate the power function. The point is, now we are good because the derivative of the log now comes in the algebraic thing. And the integral of the algebraic thing also remains in the algebraic thing. So the new integral that you'll get, which is basically just the integral of the product of these two. Where is that right? The integral of the product of these two. This is purely an algebraic integral. So this is good. Okay. Now what I, what about if I have arctan x over, okay, let's look at this one first, arctan x over x squared. That's a similar story, right? Arctan x differentiates to 1 over x squared plus 1, or 1 over 1 plus x over here. 1 over x squared will integrate to minus 1 over x, and then we are in the same story. We have completely converted it to a completely algebraic integration. This also works, and the reason is the same. The algebraic part, in both cases, 1 over x squared, integrates to something algebraic. Now what happens if I'm looking at this arctan x over x? Let's do this maybe here. Mm. Okay, so what happens when I differentiate? So it's arctan x times 1 over x. I'm not writing on the full thing, just enough to illustrate what's going on. What happens? So what should I choose to differentiate? 1 over 1 plus x squared. Yeah, I mean, arctan is the one I pick to differentiate, and I get 1 over 1 plus x squared. Right? Derivative of arctan is 1 over 1 plus x squared. What do I choose to integrate? 1 over x. I'll get ln mod x. And if x is positive, just ln x. Now, did that help? No. Why did it not help? Because this we differentiated and got in the algebraic domain. But now this thing we integrated and got it outside the algebraic domain. It's like it's like you have these two naughty kids here, and one of them you get under control, but in order to do that you lose the other kid, and the other kid is now out of control. It's in the log, thing, right? So so you've started with this product, and you end up with with this new product. Okay, but this is again like not algebraic. Now if I if I gave you this product to begin with. What would you try to do? You would try to differentiate this and integrate this, right? And then you would go back here. You would be in the circular trap. Okay? So that's sort of the reason why this type of integral, you cannot use integration by parts because the algebraic piece, 1 over x, integrates to something non-algebraic. So this technique, the integration by parts works for these kinds of things if the algebraic piece integrates or continues to integrate to something that's algebraic.